I am sure you must have understood by module what is a system and what are characteristics of a system. After understanding what a system is and characteristics of system, now we need to discuss how to develop a system. As an educational technologist, you should be an effective and efficient system designer. So, if you plan to design and develop a system, you need to remember certain points. Those points are features of a system. System has components and all components, all parts of a system function in mutual interaction. So, if any part gets damaged, the entire system may collapse or otherwise dysfunction. So, always keep in mind that all components of any system are very significant. So, if we talk about a systems approach and if you are ready to apply systems approach for any development in educational environments, remember that each and every part of that particular educational environment is significant. A system is a relative concept. System has many components and many of these components themselves can be subsystems. For example, if we talk about a school, then library is a component of a school and library itself is also a subsystem. So, we need to take care of these subsystems. Systems are open or closed. If you are talking about mechanical systems, then those may be closed because those systems may not have any effect of environmental factors. But as a system designer in education setup, you are not going to deal with closed systems. All educational setups are open systems. Open systems necessarily have impacts of environments. Some factors in the environment may affect systems. For example, in school environment, even if a temple may not be a part of that school system, if there is any function going on in that temple, then school surrounding may be disturbed. All systems have constraints. Mainly educational systems or any other systems where components are human and non-human are bound to have some constraints because of human features, human characteristics. There may be some different functions, features attached to non-human components which may create some constraints. For example, if a particular part of a machine gets slowed down, then also that is considered as a constraint. If a particular person's attitude is negative, then that is a major constraint to the system. In systems approach, we develop a system, we design a system. Approach of designing a very systematic planned system, it's systems approach. When we design such a system, we need to find out better alternative. Maybe a system is getting designed to solve a particular problem. In such cases, there need to be 3-4 alternatives ready towards the system. So, if alternative fails, then there should be some other alternative to implement. When do we realize that a particular alternative is failing? If we have decided some goals and if we have designed a system in light of those goals, then for implementation, there should be some feedback mechanism. If we have feedback mechanism, then only we will understand that a particular system is not achieving all goals. If that is the case, then we use the other alternative. So, feedback system should be inbuilt in any system. So, we need to also remember that no design is final. As you go on proceeding, as you enter into the implementation stage, you realize that some components need to be altered, some processes need to be changed. The feedback mechanism shows us a particular feedback which demands change. So, as a system developer, we need to be very open to changes and we need to accept all sorts of feedback. Before proceeding with systems approach and actual system development, 
we need to understand how a system functions. For that, let us see system environment model. Any system has some components as inputs. Then we need to define many processes on those inputs. And outputs are real goals or outcomes for which the system is getting designed. Inside area where all processes happen are system space. This entire system works like a box which has input and output pathways. All these systems work in an environment. This environment is not a part of the system. But when we discuss open system, we realize that all these environmental factors may affect the functioning of a system. So, for any systems approach, we need to identify what are inputs, what are factors, processes within the system, what is expected outcome. Now, let us talk about the actual systems development. Any systems approach has a few stages. The stages are exploration, model building, development, validation and actual implementation and institutionalization. When we implement and when our feedback is positive, we try to use that system widely that is institutionalization. Let us first focus on the stages. The first stage is exploration. What do we explore? We said that systems have components and constraints. When we talk about components, these components may be human components as well as non-human components. And constraints are possible constraints, possible hindrances which may affect functioning of system. A good system designer always first thinks of constraints also so that he or she is ready to face these constraints. Every human and non-human components have strengths and weaknesses. When we design a system, we must make use of strengths of every component. We also need to consider and remember weaknesses of all these components. Either these weaknesses may create constraints or these weaknesses need to be overcome. Maybe some other components' strengths may overlap or hide weaknesses of the other component. So at exploration stage, we need to identify human and non-human components as well as constraints. Let us see how we can do that. Let us take an example from teacher education area. All those who are related to teacher education area must be well aware of session guidance. Session guidance can be itself a system and we can explore human and non-human components of session guidance. Session guidance is related to practice teaching. So if we consider practice teaching as a big system, then session guidance can be a subsystem. Now this session guidance happens at teacher training institute. That is B.Ed college, teacher training education college. Session guidances are given by method teachers, method mentors or method masters, whatever you call it. The learners bring content topics from respective practice teaching schools. Practice teaching schools give them content. This content is given by subject teacher. For example, if I am a teacher trainee and if I have to take session on 7th standard and teach science, then science teacher of 7th standard teaching in that particular school is my subject teacher who gives me a topic. While giving topic, she considers the school curriculum and tells that teacher trainee, this is what I have taught, this is what you are expected to teach and then there is this content which will be taught after your teaching. You have to consider 7th standard students, principal of that school is one component, your curriculum, that topic, classroom infrastructure, all these components need to be considered. There are many non-human components also. For example, the classroom environment of that particular school is important and simultaneously my AV room is important. In my teacher training institute, there will be resource room, audio visual room from where I will take material. 
this teaching learning material is important which I am going to use for my session guidance. For session guidance, teacher training institutes prepare proforma which is very important for those students. So, we have to use those proforma. Along with that, library is important factor. So, system developer need to explore and identify each and every human and non-human component which may prove significant or which may have effect on the entire session guidance scenario. So, explore and identify all such components, make a list of it, that is the first step. After identifying these human and non-human components, we need to write strengths and weaknesses of each and every human component. For example, school principle is important factor. Now nature of this principle, attitude of this principle, disciplinary rules of this principle, availability and accessibility of this principle may be important factors attached with the person. I mentioned about subject teacher. So again nature of this subject teacher, attitude of this subject teacher, maybe attitude towards innovations are some important features. So we need to see strengths and weaknesses of this subject teacher also. Let us see one non-human component. For example, classroom where the teacher trainee is going to teach. Light, air, ventilation, technology available in the classroom, all these factors are very important. If that particular teacher trainee is thinking of some activities, then whether that classroom is providing facilities whether that classroom is suitable for conducting particular activities, is there any room available, space available, if the teacher trainee wants to use some technology, is there projection system, all these factors become important. If that room is very noisy, then that is a constraint, that is a weakness, so that also needs to be identified by the system developer, so that the entire session guidance can be effectively managed. After we identify strengths and weaknesses of all components, then relationship of all these components need to be planned properly. It needs to be designed and written, drawn by the system developer. See how it can be done. Identify all components. You can connect all human and non-human components to each other. Some components are not directly related. For example, method teacher about whom we are basically developing this system is not directly related to the school principal. Observer to evaluate those lessons is a different teacher. She is directly related to school principal but not method mentor. Student that is teacher trainee may not be directly related to school principal because school principal may not interact with this teacher trainee. Principal will interact with the observer whoever is coming to that particular school. Principal is directly related to his or her subject teacher. Subject teacher is not related to components of our teacher training institute. School teacher is not going to come to our library, not going to access our audio visual aids. So wherever there are relations only those should be linked. Some components have indirect relationships. For example, teacher trainee and school principal may not meet directly but Principles, nature, disciplinary rules have direct impact on the learner that is teacher trainee. So some dotted lines can be drawn to show this indirect relationship. Systems approach is an approach to find out how a problem can be solved by implementing a system. Designing a new system can be one way of systems planning or modifying existing system so as to solve some problems may also be a systems planning. When we plan such systems, we need alternatives and planning of such alternatives is known as model building. So we design and define alternative models as a stage of systems approach. Let us continue with our example of session guidance. Once we identify all components, then we think of different models of session guidance. We are expected to come out with the best possible model of session guidance. Let us see model 1 designed by systems development group. In this model, 
teacher discusses innovative methods with all students of the subject, guides individual student with respect to the selected lesson. This student means the teacher trainee writes lesson plan that is a session plan and then teacher evaluates this session plan. These are the steps through which session guidance may happen in model 1. Now let us see model 2. In model 2, teacher discusses innovative methods with all students of the subject. All students, those are teacher trainees, brainstorm on everyone's selected lessons. Teacher also participates in this discussion and comments. Now individual students, session plans are discussed in the class and then individual student writes lesson plan. Teacher evaluates all plans. So, in this model, participation of every teacher trainee in everybody's session plan is planned, designed. Now, let us see model 3. In model 3, student writes his or her own session plan. This teacher trainee presents innovative ideas in own session plan. Then, after this individual activity, session plans are discussed in the class. So every teacher trainee's session plan is criticized, evaluated by everybody. That is, that students, peers and the teacher. As per feedback gained by the entire class, student changes, edits, modifies his or her own session plan and then teacher evaluates the final plan. This is model 3. Now, teacher can implement any one model and see its efficiency and effectiveness. If that particular model succeeds, then teacher continues that model. If teacher finds any lacunae, any limitations in implementation of that particular model, then teacher selects the other model and starts implementing that model. Now here, teacher may seek feedback from teacher trainees, from colleagues, from Beard College principal and then accordingly as per feedback teacher can modify the model. So this is how model building happens in systems approach. After model building teacher selects one particular model and develops that model. So in this development each and every step of that model is elaborated further. Required planning scheduling, material, everything gets developed here. For example, now teacher trainees session performe evaluation may be different. There may be some observation sheets, there may be some opinionaire kind of tools because teacher wants to further validate this model. Then model validation starts. After the entire material is developed, that is handed over to teacher trainees. Teacher trainees implement those stages as per guidance of teacher. Then teacher seeks feedback from all stakeholders and decides effectiveness of this model. When this model is implemented on a particular group, say for one particular session guidance event, that is considered as validation. Because that particular stage is implemented on all, feedback is sought, necessary changes can be done. If that model is found very effective, then teacher decides to implement only that model in her or his teacher institution, teacher training institution. If this model is innovative and liked by other institutions, then maybe some other teacher training institutions will start using this model. Now here implementation and institutionalization both are achieved. So implementing this model in teachers own institute is implementation and starting to use this model in other teacher training institutions is institutionalization. This is how systems approach takes place.